Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Big Brace channel. My name is Amir and in this video I'm going to talk about synchronous programming, callbacks, promises and async await syntax. Now, 10 days ago I've created a poll um, in the community tab. I've asked you what's your biggest challenge when learning JavaScript and understanding asynchronous programming, promises and async await took 50% of the votes. So uh, 194 people, so around 100 people have problems um, understanding asynchronous programming in JavaScript. I'm going to try to debunk those terms and I will try to do that without much coding. Understanding the concepts is more important than syntax and code. Of course, the code example is very important to show you um, the idea or to demonstrate the idea using the syntax. But still, uh, I'm going to give you some analogies to understand asynchronous programming callbacks in a few words. So let's start with asynchronous programming. Now the concept here is that asynchronous programming allows your code to perform tasks that may take some time to complete. And that's normal, right? Any task takes some time to complete, like fetching data from a server, for example. But the catch here is that it will allow you or allow your code to perform those tasks without stopping the rest of your code from running. That's what we call non blocking process. So think about it this way. It's like doing laundry while also cooking dinner. You don't want to wait by the washing machine doing nothing when you could be preparing a meal. This is simply asynchronous programming. Now let's talk about callbacks. Think of a callback as you giving your phone number to a friend and asking them to call you back once they have the information you need. Now, let me show you an example for callbacks. Let's create a function. This function, I'm going to call it fetch data. And it takes callback as an input. Then we'll have a set timeout function. The set timeout function is going to simulate an asynchronous operation like fetching data from a server, for example. In this set timeout, I'm going to pass an anonymous function and that's going to create some data to return. So let me have a data object. And here I have the first key that's going to be the user, let's say a mirror, for example. And um, let, let's have age, for instance, 41. Then I'm going to call the callback function and I'm going to pass the data after the delay. And the delay, I'm going to make it mm, two seconds, for instance. So 2000 milliseconds. Now, let me call the fetch data and provide a callback function in order to handle the data. So fetch data, and I'm going to pass the data inside. And that's going to uh, return callback function, which is called once the data is ready. So let's do console.log. And I will pass here uh, the data, right? And let's say, for instance, something like data received and the data itself. Now let's exit. Let's do node callback.js and take a look. Two seconds, and we have data received a year and age 41. So that's exactly what you have done. You have done other stuff while waiting the data to be received. And we have done that using simulation by the set timeout function with a delay of 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. Promises are like waiting for a response from a job interviewer. After the interview, you are promised a response. You don't know what's going to happen. You have answered all of the questions in the interview and you're hoping to receive an employment letter or a job offer letter at least. And after the interview, you are promised a response which can be either be an acceptance letter, which means fulfilled, or a rejection letter, which means rejected. Either way, the good companies do this. Um, if you're not selected, they should inform you by an email that unfortunately you're not selected. And of course, if you're selected, hopefully they will um, send you a job offer. Now, you don't wait doing nothing. You carry on with your life, knowing that you'll get a letter in the future in both cases whether accepted or rejected. And that's exactly what promises are in JavaScript. So you can have a function called fetch data, 
this function will return new promise. This promise has one of two states, either resolved or reject. You remember the letters, either you're accepted and you will be employed in the company or you're rejected, unfortunately, and you will not be uh, employed in the company. And uh, it gives you an indication here. You will have a state either resolve or rejected. You cannot have both, of course. So uh, I'm going to say here resolve or reject. Again, I'm going to uh, have my set timeout uh, function to simulate a successful operation. And that's going to return here um, true in case of success. And if success, I want to return resolve, right? And I'm going to pass here uh, user. That's an object user is uh, back, for example, and age is 25, you know, whatever else. I'm going to reject. So we're going to reject with a message saying failed to fetch data. And we're going to have a delay again of 2000 milliseconds. Now I want the data to be fetched. And that's the promise we're going to use dot then whatever the result is going to be whether resolve or reject, we will have dot then. So we'll say fetch data dot then and here I want to pass the data itself. And here I'm going to console.log the data. And uh, we're going to or we can also do like this data received. Right. And this is going to run after two seconds if successful. So this is in case of success. But what about the case of failure? In case of failure or error, we're going to handle that using dot catch and take a look. This was the first suggestion. So dot catch attaches a callback for only the rejection of the promise. So uh, if we'll choose dot catch here, we're going to pass the error and we're going to return um, the error itself. We're going to just console dot log the error. So we can say error here is the error. All right, so uh, let's take a look. Let's run that node promises dot JS. Take a look two seconds. And we have data received user back and age 25. This is simply simulating fetching data from a server. And the best example for that is fetching data from an external API. If the data doesn't exist, the data that you're requesting doesn't exist, you're going to have an error. And if the data is there, of course, you're going to get it. Now, last but not least, async await. Now, async and await make working with promises easier to read and write. Um, promises have something called the callback hell. Dot then, dot then, dot then. Now the async await solves that or makes working with promises easier to read and write. Take a look here. This is a function, but that's an asynchronous function, right? Asynchronous function is the same as a normal function, but with one exception that it returns a weight in response. So this function is going to be an asynchronous function, which means non blocking. It's going to fetch data um, again. It's going to return new promise with resolve and reject. Again, we're simulating uh, the data fetching by setting a delay of two seconds. Again, if success in case of success, we're returning or we have uh, a resolve state. And um, if it's failure, we have a reject state. This main function is going to be asynchronous as well. And you have here data. So we're going to await for the fetch data. So um, if above here we have this fetch data as an asynchronous function, we're going to await for the fetch data to fetch whatever the data and you know, it takes whatever the time it needs without blocking everything. So that's going to be saved or assigned to a variable called data. Now, if you run that node async.js, we're going to wait two seconds. Again, you will have the exact same result. So that's the whole thing. We are returning a new promise. We are simulating an asynchronous operation using set timeout. Um, if the operation was successful, we resolve the promise with some data. And if the operation failed, we reject the promise with an error message. 
and we have here uh, two seconds delay. Um, let's say, for instance, that I want to simulate the error. How I can do that? Well, in the set timeout, I can actually uh, I can set the success to false instead of true. Can do like this, right? So you have here error failed to fetch data because we have the success to false. If we will revise the four points quickly, asynchronous programming allows tasks to run without blocking the main thread and keeps the application responsive. As far as the callbacks, they are functions that pass as arguments to handle results of asynchronous operations once they are complete. Promises they are objects representing eventual completion or failure of asynchronous operations, handled with .den and .catch. And finally, the async await syntax is nothing but a syntactic sugar over promises, which makes synchronous code look and behave like synchronous code, using try catch for error handling as well. Hopefully this has clarified a little bit the image for you guys. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. Hope this was clear for you and I will see you in the next one. Till then, stay safe and be well.